And then there's GameStop. We got to talk about GameStop. Uh, shares under pressure this morning. The drop coming, even though the video game retailer posted better than expected quarterly revenues and a much narrower loss than a year earlier. The meme stock, though, isn't a stranger to huge swings. The previous uh, quarter, its previous quarterly release was uh, followed by a 27% drop during one session. Joining us right now is Anthony Chum Chum uh, uh, Chakabao. He's the managing director at Loop Capital. Good morning to you. I don't know. Morning. I don't know. I, you know, I thought we were going to, I don't know if I thought the earnings were going to be better, but I thought we were going to hear something on this conference call about the future of the company. And I didn't hear much. Jim Cramer was tweeting out about it last night. I heard, you know, that they were going to, you know, increase warehouse space. That, that's pretty much where we're at. I mean, that earnings call was shameful. I mean, absolutely positively shameful. Uh, this is a company that is in the midst of this massive turnaround. And what do we get? We get a couple minutes of comments. There's no color whatsoever in terms of the results. There's no color whatsoever in terms of what the strategy is going to be going forward. They don't take any questions whatsoever. It is shameful. It was disrespectful to their shareholders. Uh, and I just, it, it just astounded me quite frankly <laughs> I don't know where to go after that I mean I think the big question for those who are in it those who are believers is whether there's a case to be made that this could work out in their favor I mean look I, I like to think we're all rooting for GameStop I think you'd, you'd want look I want all companies to, to succeed the question at this point is is I think one more of any more than anything a valuation the valuation is nonsensical. And at some point, let's just call it what it is. The emperor has no clothes. I know Ryan Cohen, you know, founded Chewy and sold it for a gajillion dollars. He's got three, at least three zeros in his net worth more than I do. But at the end of the day, this is Eddie Lamper with Sears all over again. At some point, we're going to have to come to the realization that the emperor has no clothes. There is no strategy. There's no turning this business around. And it's nonsensical that it's that the valuation is $15 billion. At this point, is there anything that they could tell you that would change your mind at all? I mean, there, there's, a, there's an interesting piece that effectively says, look, this is actually now just a, a well-funded startup. By the way, there's other well-funded startups out there. You know, the difference between a startup and, and GameStop is that startups, you know, their sales grow really, really fast and they lose money, but, it, but you can see visibility to them making money. I see none of that with GameStop. Yes, their sales were up because we're really early in a video game console cycle, but this is a razor and a razor blade business, right? You don't really make any money on the consoles. You make money on selling the software and more and more gamers are downloading the software. And so the razor blade sales are not going to be there. So to, you know, to liken this to an internet startup is an insult to internet startups. Wow. Wow. Okay, fair value. For GameStop right now, it's trading at 185 I mean, my, bucks. My what last uh, valuation was 10 bucks a share, and 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 I, you know, I haven't covered the company for quite some time, but there's nothing to make me think that it, that it's worth any more than that. Uh, you know, for this stock to have a 15 billion dollar valuation is the dumbest thing I've heard in quite some time. So you just think all these people, you know, it's I, I Anthony, I will tell you. I mean, I don't know if you have a Twitter handle because the hate is going to come. Uh, you, you and I actually have. A somewhat similar view, though, I, 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 I'm rooting for the company and that I'd like to, to see it work. I just don't know how it's going to work. For my money, I've always thought, you know, that Ryan Cohen thought maybe he could take a $10 company and turn it into a $30 or $40 company. I think at $185, it's actually created its own complication for him. I, I just wonder what you tell the folks who are, who are on Reddit right now, uh, probably watching us, saying, ah, the suits are after us. Yeah, I mean, look, first off, I'm not on Twitter or Instagram um, God bless or you. really anything. And I've already <laughs> gotten the death threat, so that's nothing new. What I will tell these people is sell the stock first and ask questions later. Um, you know, look, I know it's very exciting to the moon, uh, diamond hands, all that type of stuff. But that's not how stocks work, OK? And in, in the short term, stocks are weighing machines and the long, uh, are voting machines and long term, they're weighing machines. And what I mean by that is at some point, stock prices have to reflect 
the fundamentals of the business. They have to reflect reality. That hasn't happened for quite some time at GameStop, but eventually it will. The Eddie Lampert of yeah. retail. Yeah. Anthony, um, you know, just uh, keep, a, keep an eye out today. Just, just, just uh, <laughs> stay safe, as they say. We appreciate you joining us and being uh, as candid as you have been. And we look forward to talking to you again. Sounds good. Anytime.